Hey guys, welcome to the high ground. My name is Fabio and in our third episode of our knot and rope craft series, we're talking about the Prusik knot. In the first two videos of the series, I showed you the figure of eight knot and the clove hitch. And today we will go a little bit the other way around. I will first show you the knot and from there we will see what it actually does for what it is used and then I'll give you some examples how you can actually well use it in the field uh, maybe with climbing with survival or also in your daily life. Before we actually start working on the ropes a few words on terminology. The Prusik is a friction hitch. Many people use Prusik and friction hitch synonymously. Every Prusik is a friction hitch, but not every friction hitch is a Prusik. There are a lot of other friction hitches around. We might get to them a little bit later. Today we are actually talking about the Prusik knot. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that Prusik is not only used for the actual knot, but it's also used for the sling you need to tie the knot. So this is a Prusik sling. If a climber comes up to you and asks you if you have your Prusik with you, he might mean the sling and not if you are able to tie the knot. Great, with that out of the way, let's get started. So here I have my trusty old climbing rope and I have my Prusik sling. The length of the sling is not relevant as long as it is long enough to tie it around the rope. Now, how do you do the Prusik knot? You just take the sling, go through once and twice. Now, going around twice is the bare minimum. The, oft, the more often you just uh, loop it around the rope, the more aggressive your Prusik sling will be. Now, what does it do? You can shift it around easily if you hand it on the rope, but as soon as you pull on the sling, it tightens up and blocks. The same for the other direction, it tightens up and blocks. You can slide it around, nothing moves. That's the basic principle of a Prusik knot. Now, what is the use of a Prusik knot? Well, originally it was invented to actually climb a rope up. So you take a small sling and tie it to your harness or to your rigger belt. And then you take a larger sling where you can stand in with your foot. So you pull, slide the larger sling up, stand up, get the small sling up, sit in the small sling, and then slide the larger sling up even more. That's an emergency technique in our days. So if you really want to climb a rope and you know that you have to climb a rope, please don't do it with Prusix. It's, it's a shit show. I mean, it's really hard, it's slow, it doesn't function too well because if the Prusik is loaded, it's, it can be hard to unload it and to get it slided up, etc. So that's, you can do it, you can do it in a survival or emergency situation, but it's not what this knot is used for anymore today. You can use that knot to either fix yourself to a fixed rope Remember in the last video on the clove hitch, I showed you how to set up a fixed rope. If you're interested in that one, I have a link in the video description that uh, uh, gives you the full playlist on all my videos on ropes and knots. So you can actually tie yourself to a fixed, uh, to a fixed rope and then just pull it along and be secured to the fixed rope in that way. Additionally, you can tie yourself to only one fixed point and have a longer rope and use it to, well, basically shorten the rope. I'll show you that example in a second. And last but not least, you can use a Prusik to set up a pulley. Now, 
a lot of people would think now, oh yeah, you can also do that with a trucker hitch, but you can use the Prusik on an already loaded rope and that doesn't work with the trucker hitch. So I'll also show you that application in a second. One big point for the Prusik is to use it as a backup when rappelling or upsiling. I will not go too much into detail in this video how to set up an upsile and a backup with a Prusik knot. Um, that will be a separate video, the, most likely next week, but uh, you already know it and can be on your toes when the next video is coming out because you want to know how to use that one for upsiling. Before I show you the applications of this knot, it is important to understand the limitations. So whenever you want to secure yourself to a rope with a Prusik, make sure that there is tension or at least somewhat tension on the rope. If you have a lot of slack on the rope, it doesn't work for securing yourself to it. So this rope is tense, right? If I would fall on that Prusik, it holds. Now, if this rope wouldn't be, tense or the straight or having tension on it, then I'd have slack. And if I would fall like this now, there is a much longer way, there is much more force on the impact point of the knot and it could rip off the sheet of the rope, the sling itself could break because it's not a dynamic sling, it's a static sling that's used for this. So please don't do that, only use it when the rope is straight when you don't have a lot of slack in the rope and then you can uh, tie yourself to it and secure yourself to another rope without any issues. Another thing is please be mindful of the condition of this rope. Of course if it is frayed, if there is any part where the sheet is off etc don't use it anymore unless you really have to but the Prusik also tends to not work as well with iced ropes. So be especially careful in winter. Please be careful when you're in the mountains and the rope is, very, is quite wet. That all influences how well the Prusik actually holds on the rope. When in doubt about the condition of the rope, be safe. Give it another loop around. But if the rope is a full icicle, that won't help you either. Now, I told you I can secure myself a rope and basically change the length of the rope with a Prusik. How does that work? Now, let's imagine this end of the rope is fixed to something 10 meters down the line and in this direction is a crevice. And I want to go closer to the crevice and just check out, hey, when does it actually start? But I don't know below the snow where it actually will begin. So it's possible that I stand on the snow bridge that will collapse under me. And um, therefore I want to be secure. Now I have 40, 50 meters of rope here, but if I just tie myself to the end of that rope, then I will fall 50 meters and then I will be fucked as well. So it doesn't work. What I can do is I put a Prusik on that end and I'm just going closer to the crevice, closer to the crevice, and as soon as I fall, the Prusik will hold me. And since I don't have a lot of slack, it's also not a problem with pulling off the sheet of the rope, etc. So this is what I mean when I say you can change the actual length of the rope with which you are tied to something. And if I want to go back, I just pull it, push it back up, and if I would fall, it would hold me. I can push it back up, if I would fall, it would hold me. Now I told you, you can also use the Prusik for a pulley. And I have set up my rope here. It's the same rope. Let's assume there is something very heavy on this end. Um, up here, there is a little rolling device, but it could also be a carabiner. We are not talking about how to actually set up a pulley. I just want to show you the application of the Prusik. Now, Let's say whatever is on this end is too heavy for me to pull it up directly one-to-one. -one. Then I can fix a Prusik to this end. 
like this. Put the carabiner through and run this rope through a carabiner. If I pull upwards now, I have a two to one, I mean, I will lose a little bit for friction, but I will have a two to one pulley. And I pull up and if the rope comes up, then I push the prusik back down, pull up again, pull up again. Of course, I would, that do, I would do that a little bit lower because then I can pull out of my back, but I want you to be able to see it. So, but that's where prusik is most useful. And of course, if I want to have another, well, if I have another pulley in here, I could again attach a prusik to this rope and play the same game. So much for the pulley. This was the Prusik knot, a very versatile knot. A lot of climbers and outdoor people always have a small sling with them. I would recommend you to do so because if something happens, especially the pulley can be very, very useful to, um, to rescue your partner or get something hauled up a mountain or a steep slope. So um, keep that one in mind. And also to reiterate that, I'm not excluding the setup of a upside or rappel and how you build a pulley uh, from this video because I want to have this knowledge for, my, for myself. I just don't want this to be a two hour video. I will do a video on pulleys during the next week. I will for sure do a video on how to set up an upside during the next weeks. So stay tuned, we are covering those topics but it will have specific videos for them. If you're interested in more of this content, hopefully in the next weeks the weather will be better and we will be able to go outside, then subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or suggestions or other ideas how to use the Prusik, please let me know. I'm always interested in learning new things. And otherwise, if you found it useful, please leave us a like. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it and I see you next time.